guys, it's Wednesday, and we're gonna do What's That Wednesday. So let's get started, shall we? What is this thing? This thing is called a string tree, and you've seen it on many guitars, and it's mostly on fenders. And the question is, some of you guys know why, and some of you don't. So let's explain what it's there for in the first place. Okay, so there's something important you have to understand about a guitar and how it's made. When a guitar is being built, Across the nut, it is very important that we have string tension pulled back over the nut. In other words, the tension of the string needs to be pushed with force. So one, it doesn't pop out of the nut, which will obviously be a hindrance, and also it could chip the nut, but also for intonation purposes, you want the, the string to ride on the far end, which means the very end of the nut. You see this? You look at most nuts, you realize that the string is actually riding on the very end of it, and that is because, just like your fret, which is crowned over, you want as little contact with the string to the surface as possible. This uh, makes the intonation more precise. So, what ma most manufacturers like Gibson or Paul Reed Smith do is they angle the headstock back. Well, Leo Fender had a different plan, and his plan was to take a 3 inch by 2 inch block of maple and make a neck out of it. Why? Because it was cheap, and he figured maple was hard. So he could make it happen. Keep in mind he wasn't a guitar player, in fact he wasn't a musician. He didn't play a really an instrument until the day he died. He was just an innovator and a builder. So what he de decided to do was make the neck straight, including the headstock. This created a problem because without that downward force, one, the strings would pop out, and two, the intonation wasn't there. So they created the string tree. But why two string trees on some guitars and one on others? It makes no sense if you think about it. It's very kind of crazy. That's because in closer inspection, you'll find that a lot of guitars that have one string tree, like so, have what's called standard, staggered tuning keys, which means the tuning keys are not level. See how they're going downward? Each, whoops, each tuning key is getting shorter as it goes. Okay, it's actually in sets of two, right? These three are low, high, and then these three get lower. There's different ways to get there. Um, some do a two, then two lower, then two lower. Some do one, two, three, you know, four, five, six, all the way getting down lower. Some use the first three is higher, the last, the last three is lower. This creates that. A big solve of the problem. I don't know why I'm saying a big solve of the problem. It doesn't even make sense. All right, a big way to solve the problem. Eric Johnson's Strat actually has an eighth inch of the headstock shaved off. So the headstock is thinner, which means no string trees, and he uses standard tuning keys to solve the problem. So why doesn't Fender just angle the headstock back? It just seems like such an easy thing to do and you won't need string trees. Well, here's why. First of all, to do that, you would need to carve the wood out of about a five inch block, which would be very expensive, okay? And uh, I've seen actually manufacturers do it, so you know, by cutting like one block this way and the other block the other way. In other words, getting two necks out of the same block. But even then, they couldn't do the angle as extreme as this. So when the manufacturers do an angle like this, they create what's called a scarf joint. You can only see it, it's right there, okay? What that means is this piece of wood isn't five inches thick. What it is, it is two pieces of wood that was two inches thick. One board going this way, and one board going this way. And then what happens is they glue it in at an angle. Now it makes a really strong and powerful joint because glue is really strong and there's no issues there. Very rarely do you ever see a scarf joint break. In fact, it, it's less likely than most other breaks I've ever seen. So what's this? Well, this is a locking key. What's a locking key? Well, it's a tuning key that requires no wrapping around it, okay? So basically what happens is, there is usually a dial here, or sometimes on the top, like a Paul Reed Smith, that basically lets you turn it, or use a pick, sometimes in his case, to turn it, to lock the string in place. Well, what does that look like? Picture a cylinder. You cut a drill a hole right through the cylinder, right? So you have a tube, you drill a hole through it, and you're running the string through this hole on the side, and you put a piston in there, and that, as you screw the, the, uh, the, uh, I don't know what that's called. Hmm, somebody answer that in the comments. Anyways, as you turn the mechanism, the screw goes up and it pinches the string, holding the string, again, if you look closely here, with no wraps. So in other words, on a guitar like this, or any guitar with locking tuning keys, you would take the string, push it right through the tuning key, pull it as tight as you can so there's no slack, turn the knob, the, uh, knob. oh, it's a knob, 
turn the knob or the, on the back or the top, uh, tune it, cut it off, you're done. There's lots of versions of these locking tuning keys. In fact, so many so that every almost every tuning key you have out there, including Cousin's, can be replaced with a locking key version. This American Standard Strat had standard keys on it, and I put locking keys on it. Why? Well, that's the question. In fact, I know for a fact half of you guys are walking out there, you have no freaking clue why there's locking keys. And here's why I know. Because I own a music store, which means once a week or twice a week, when we check the guitars and tune them and clean them and polish them from everybody touching and loving the guitars, we always find somebody has turned one of the locks loose and the strings have popped out. And of course, they don't say anything because I understand. Why would you want to walk to the counter and say, I turned this knob and then it fell apart. I'm really sorry. <laughs> so they leave. Um, I'm not laughing at you if you've done it. I'm just helping you. So here's the deal. So what that does when you turn that is it locks the string locked. If you loosen it, yes, the string comes out. I think because a lot of confusion over locking keys is this. Locking nuts. A locking nut is a totally different thing than a locking key. A locking nut, if you watch the Floyd Rose video that I put out, shows that you lock this so that these tuning keys do not work anymore. And obviously they turn, but they have no effect on the string. So what is a locking tuner then? If it doesn't stop the tuning from using, or the, tuning, the tuner from working, which obviously it doesn't. You can tune just fine. So a lot of, believe, a lot of people believe that if you lock this, then you're in tune no matter what. That's not close to even being cl close to true. Obviously, if you lock these, you can still turn these all you want. So what the locks do is they just help you restring quickly. Now, ironically, because locking keys are for, generally for professionals, in other words, people who want to put on strings very quickly in a small time frame, like in between a song, generally they use really nice tuning keys. So locking keys, by default, are just better quality tuners. No different than just using a high-end tuner that you can buy anywhere else, just added the locks in. So again, the locks have no purpose for actually locking the guitar in tune. They just lock the string so the string can be restrung the guitar very quickly. And there's usually no slippage with wraps. So if you've incorrectly uh, wrapped your strings, there'll be no slippage because obviously it, the string has been pinned against the post. So that's what lockers do. All right, guys, so what's this Wednesday? We covered string trees, and we covered some uh, locking keys, and I hope that was fun for you guys. Thanks for your time. Know your gear.